a very rare occasion is we get a request from a instructor that wants to know the power after the test was run. So that's kind of counterintuitive to me personally because that's why we run a priori power analysis. We run the power analysis ahead of time before we run the test so we know what the minimum sample size should be. Whatever we're looking for in a set of data should be there if the sample size was at least X amount, whatever it is, right? The, the minimum sample size. But let me show you how to do this in G power. So let's pretend we ran a regular one-way ANOVA F test. Just a, just a simple one way between group and Nova. And we had 150 people in it. And we had three groups. Right back to our staff, managers, executives, and, you know, their job satisfaction or depression or whatever it was. And we change. So the effect size is a medium. Uh, Critical alpha is always 0.05. Sample size, we had three groups. Boom. So it gives you the power, right? Not quite 0.8. So watch this. If we if we bounce the sample size up to, I don't know, 200. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look what it did to the power. It dropped it. It kicked it way up to 0.89, okay? So... That, that's how you would run a post hoc power analysis. Hope that helped. MGZ out.